Greetings, model railroad enthusiast, and welcome to the Union Pacific Railroad Evanston Subdivision in HO scale. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner and builder of the layout, and your host for episode 15 of season 2024. It's going to be a wild update today. Going to be jumping all over the place, so hold on to your seats as we look at what happened this past week. Very fortunate to have members of the channel. Our latest member, shout out to William Fix, who joined just a week or so ago. So very happy to have you, William, and then all of our members that you can see here with how long they've been with the channel. Some of them over two years. So thank you to all the members and your support. I think your support is going to enable us to very soon have a big boy on the layout. So thank you so much. We'll, of course, welcome anyone to become a member. Definitely helps things move along. All right, so we did streets and crossings again. Some more work on the streets and crossings. This is the Walther Street cro Street system with uh, an asphalt road and sidewalks and curbs that go along with it. I kind of put this together last week, and now I have painted it, as you can see. Looks definitely a lot better painted. Now, I painted it with the Walther's Top Coat, a 50-50 mixture of their concrete color and their asphalt color. Uh, asphalt goes down black but turns gray before you know it. Uh, and this top coat by Walther's, excuse me, by Woodland Scenics, I should say, is kind of designed to be uh, sanded to show weathering. Now, one of the things I was worried about with this Walther's street system is that it was built in sections and it kind of had seams here you can see the different sections and had seams in it which actually was covered up by the paint however once as you can see i started to sand it the seams came right back in force now asphalt in the united states is not done in sections it's done one side and then the other side so there might be a seam down the middle but not the cross seams. So here you can see sanding it to make it look weathered, which it did actually make it look a little weathered. So that definitely was achieved. But then the seams came right back and kind of ruined the whole appearance. And I tried to sand it even harder on this seam. It uh, did not help. Um, yeah, I was kind of disappointed. And that, but I think I will still be able to weather it. I'll just use chalk or something to weather it. Uh, but the seams coming back was a definite disappointment. That's 1000 grit, by the way, which Woodland Scenics re recommends. So here, I went ahead and put it back. I did sand the whole thing, both pieces. The seams really came out on that back piece. Now, in the United States, curbs are uh, put down together with the gutters. So you have the curb and then the gutter all uh, poured as one form. And the, one of the drawbacks of the curbs on the Walther's kits is that there's no gutters. You just have the curb that goes straight into the asphalt, which is not how things are done in the United States. So I went ahead and marked a pencil line where all the uh, where the curbs came up and uh, will be located on the asphalt. And I decided I was going to go ahead and paint the uh, gutters in for the curbs so that it looks more like the way roads look in the United States. So I went ahead, after I got those pencil lines in there, I went ahead and masked it off with some masking tape. As you can see, there's just a little strip on both sides. Uh, visible, I also masked off the back section. Now it looks like a 
thick strip there, but most of that's going to be covered with the sidewalk. So it'll be just a little gray up. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it the same color as the sidewalks. Now, I first of all did a flat clear coat on there to kind of uh, help so that the paint would actually go underneath the masking tape, although it still did a little bit. But it wasn't too difficult to go back with the gray and touch that up a little bit. Now you can see when I took the masking tape off, uh, masking tape was not the only thing that I took off. Also took off a lot of the paint. So recommendation, uh, sand the plastic of the Walther's kit before you paint it. All right, switching gears from the Walther's kits now to the crossing. Now this is Walther's crossing the concrete crossings which I installed last week but for the roadway going through since I'm putting this on a curved section I didn't want to keep curving all the sections of the Walther's kit because it does make the aprons and so forth to go on there so I decided to go ahead and use Woodland Scenics plaster uh, smooth it system and I put the paving tape down and then poured some of their smooth it plaster now this plaster has um, a little bit softer when it dries and so you're able to sand it down much more easily than like plaster or Paris or patching plaster uh, so the once it's down then you can sand on you can see it. it's a little rough I ended up putting two coats on so this is not how the finished product's going to look. After it's sanded, it will be much smoother. All right, I also worked on backdrops. Now here's the way the backdrop looked last week. And a lot of people commented on how much they liked the backdrops. And I think a lot of people liked this last backdrop here with the snow-capped mountains. I took that picture while we were out in uh, Utah at Morgan. And it does look pretty good, but it's a little too sharp for a background picture. And it totally does not match the backdrop background picture I got from Google Earth. So both of these look pretty good. Now the Google Earth one is a little bit fuzzier, which actually looks good for a back backdrop. But look at the contrast there. They both look good, but they don't look good together. So I tried to hide it with some trees, but it was obvious to me that that was just going to be too stark of a contrast. So I went back to Google Maps and tried to get another picture that would better match the first one. This is what I came up with. Now you can see i am already decided to pull it out, but I left it in just for a second more so I could get a video of it. And you can see it is off of Google Maps, but it was taken on a different day. And so the sunlight hit it differently. And it, I think it may have been a different time of year because the grass is browner in this one than in the other. And this doesn't have any snow on it here either. So just because they're both from Google Maps does not mean that they're going to be consistent together now here I went back to Google Maps and say what hey what's going on learned uh, some things about Google Maps or, or Google Earth it's kind of the same thing but I was able to get a picture that matched almost exactly the first one so this I was really happy with the way this turned out I love that uh, sign there now here's what I learned on Google Maps I guess I should have figured it out but here's uh, this is the Interstate 84, um, and it's a street view, and you can you know look here and take pictures wherever you want, and then use it on your backdrop backdrops. And I use GIMP photo editing software. Now one thing that's kind of different here is you keep going down the line here. You can see I'll tell these were all taken on the same day looks pretty much the same and then all of a sudden when you get to a certain point now the pictures are from a different day and even a different year it looks like their construction cones up the sun is in a different spot it's a different time a different time of season than everything and so I think that's what happened with the other picture it was taken 
uh, from a different, not exactly the same location. So anyway, here I'm back to the one that I used. Now, what, once you get to the, sp the picture you want, then you can actually click on save. There's a little icon there for save. And then you can actually set the resolution you want to use. And I just used the largest one. There's an, one setting for 8K. So I set it for 8K and then clicked on saved image. And then you can save that to your computer and then open it up with GIMP. And then you can uh, just use the horizontal part there that fits for the backdrop. So uh, this is how it turned out. And I cut the sky out and just put them up against the existing uh, sky that I painted uh, onto the styrene backdrop. And I think it looks pretty good. I really like this uh, sign here. Are you prepared to meet Jesus? I am. Yeah, but it looks pretty good. I put some trees in there. So it looks like the buildings are in the background. I kind of made these trees a little bit higher to hide the seam there. Now, once I got that done, then this jumped out at me. It's kind of interesting. Once I got that fixed, and I was like, whoa, a second, this isn't right either. Somehow, when I put this put together, I made a mistake, and I somehow uh, increased the saturation. This is actually the same picture flipped over, and it... uh. It, the saturation levels are not the same. Then you have a seam right in the middle of the road, which you can't hide with a tree or anything. But you can hide with the street itself. You can with the truck. But you still have that obvious seam. And it's, like like I said, the two different pictures are not quite the same. So I'm going to probably replace that one as well at some point in time. They only cost $8 a piece, so it's not a lot of loss to replace them. I did get some more PTC antennas. This one is installed at Morgan. I also put in some ballast for a maintenance road. And these are from Custom Finishing Models. And I ordered these off of eBay. I ordered four, paid for four. He sent me one. But he was real nice about it. I told him about it. He was very... Uh, apologetic and sent me four more so i got five total for the price of four so thank you custom finishing models so definitely would re recommend them and i also extended the this is the one at wasatch and i installed the one there and then extended a maintenance road as well now here i put a second coat on uh, when i sanded this there were some air bubbles when you mix the Woodland Scenics plaster, it says to have it set for two minutes. I think it's to get all the bubbles out. Somehow it must not have worked the way it was supposed to. But I put on a second coat, which I usually do anyway, to kind of get things smoothed out as much as possible and then sand it down. And I, I did get it absolutely completely uh, sanded smooth, but I think that's okay because asphalt will have imperfections and so if I end up with any craters that are still left I'll just kind of use some black paint and make it look like it's a repair job on a pothole so so this is uh, the way it looks now here you can see it painted with the same top coat paint from Woodland Scenics and I probably I, I don't know I might sand this a little bit once it dries really good to give it some weathering but I'll probably use chalk weathering as well now there's a lot of white from the plaster still on the ballast uh, but then I'll all be covered up because I will put more ballast on both sides of the road yeah so that'll all be covered up with ballast and I may even put a sidewalk across there we'll see all right, so here, with one thing you have to try and make sure you do for crossings is test them out. And you want to try and make it as uh, smooth as possible from one to the other. So it would be kind of plausible that a car could, going 25, 30 miles per hour, be able to go across here without causing too much discombobulation. A lot of times people just put a plastic piece from the 
rails down to the to the um, plywood, and they end up with a slope that's just too too steep. And a car would actually bottom out if it went across there, or if it was going across at speed, it would really mess things up. So here you can see there's still plenty of clearance uh, between the bottom of the truck and the road. So I think it's definitely plausible for a crossing. Now I was very fortunate. Somebody contacted me. Uh, they actually live in the Chicago area, and they watched the videos. And um, he had some crossing gates that he picked up at an estate sale and asked me if I wanted them. And so these are by Tomar. And he uh, gave them to me for $60, which is a great, great deal, especially since I got a controller to go with it. Uh, these are three times that if you buy them. Uh, uh, new and these have never been installed anywhere they've just been sitting in a box I think they're probably um, from like they're probably they could be like 20 years old the controller was more than 20 years old I think these were probably from what I could tell from the instructions was uh, 2009 was the revision date on the instructions and this is a uh, four rpm motor three volts four rpms which means to make a half turn like this would be one eighth of a minute which is about seven and a half seconds so if it would turn halfway in seven and a half seconds it'd be about this speed something like that so i think it's going to be pretty right on i'm really looking forward to it i think tomar makes some pretty good stuff so i'm definitely excited about getting these installed and I'm going to get a different controller. The controller I got uh, only does one track and the controller like I said is from the 90s and I don't think the ex ex uh, expanders are even available anymore. These are the, f the wires for the uh, LEDs and then of course the wires for the 3 volt motor. So Logic Rail sell, sells these uh, and also sells a controller for them. The newer ones now have uh, tortoises for the motors. All right, switching gears once again. Hold on. We're now back to the, the street here going under the main line. These are the uh, painting pins from Woodland Scenics. I was going to do a full review on these, but uh, they were a total fail. So I'm just going to go with that. They're, they just didn't work. The yellow, I could not get the yellow to come out smoothly. There's something wrong with it. Now, if you notice, the white came out pretty good. And you notice I have the gutters in there. See where you have the curbs and then the gutters. So I definitely want to get that part in there. Uh, but the yellow down the middle, uh, big fail. And I tried different tips with the same pin and everything I could not get the paint to come out smoothly so I was disappointed about that so I'm going to try uh, something different if you notice I painted over the yellow and uh, I'm going to sand that down a little bit hopefully without getting the uh, um, seams coming out I'll probably do some weathering with chalk too so even though it's not all very even it's actually going to look good to be like that. It'll be fine. And then I'll, I have some, I'm going to try some decals from KD. They have some yellow decals for yellow striping. So I'm going to put it on, on, uh, on there. And then I'll probably stop on Morgan. Um, I'm not going to do this one until much later. Now this one here does not have sidewalks. So I think I'm probably going to use just the Woodland Scenics road system through here and not the street system. Because I am going to move on from Morgan. So this is, I spent about 10 weeks, 11 weeks on Morgan here. So I'm going to leave Morgan 
So goodbye till I come around again to do the detail part and get the rest of the streets in and so forth. I'm going to push on and uh, do this area here. Get some wood, plywood covered up with scenery. This is the last part that I have to do. So I'm going to do this corner all the way around. I'm going to do the upper level first and then the bottom level. So this next week, I'm hoping to get it painted and ground foam and backdrops done on the upper level so that I can then, as soon as possible, start working on this bottom level. This is going to be a, a cool area. It's got some cool bridges. You have the Weber River going through there. The interstate's going to go past Devil's Slide. This is going to be the Taggart Tunnels. Lots of it, cool stuff. The Taggart Tunnel Mountain's going to be almost all rock molds. So, Mark Bridgewater, if you're out there, it's not too late to schedule a trip up to beautiful Illinois. April and May and June are the best times of the year weather-wise. But I know you're he, he's busy working on his layout. And I'll have to try and figure out a way to do it myself. Let's watch some trains, though. We've been watching trains go through Morgan for the last few weeks, so I thought I would ch change gears here a little bit and uh, watch trains through different areas. Here's the Wasatch control point. As I said, there's going to be a water tower there and a shed from the prototype. There's a shed at Wasatch control point uh, where homeless people live. And then there's an old water tower that's still standing from the steam days. So I'm going to try and have both those two things here at Wasatch. Again, that will be when I make the second go around and do a lot of the detailing each area. First time around, we're just doing basic scenery, and then I'm going to come back and add a lot of cool details and also start weathering equipment. Definitely helps though to have the maintenance road in there and the PTC antenna. You see a stack train coming into Evanston, going across the crossing. Here we see the coal train coming across also. This is uh, one of the new uh, AC uh, SD70 ACEs that I picked up from Lombard Hobbies made by Athern, followed by uh, Intermountain Tier 4 Gevo and an Athern regular Gevo Canadian Pacific. Here we have a uh, scale trains Tier 4 Jivo as a DPU, mid train DPU on the stack train. Now if you listen in the background, background you can see, uh, you, you can hear a steam locomotive coming around. So we'll see that in just a few seconds or a few minutes. Uh, here's the steam locomotive. Uh, very soon we'll s hopefully see a big boy pull on the excursion train. If all goes well. Brooklyn locomotive imports. No, that's not right. Broadway limited imports is coming out with their big boy again in a few weeks, I think. So imagine this headed up by a big boy with the Athern FEF, which you see now. A couple of scale trains, tenders, and an Athern SD70 4015. That's the uh, SD70 that UP uses specifically for excursion trains. It has silver trucks. Uh, silver trucks. These are all Walther's Proto 
uh, passenger excursion train excursion cars. Brooklyn, excuse me, Broadway Limited Imports is also coming out with a business car that has the porch for the end of the train. This is a cool scene with both the stack train and the excursion train coming up the Wasatch grade. The sound tracks decoder on this FE8 as it comes up the grade it it's it has a louder chuffing sound and when it goes down grade it has a, a, a softer chuffing sound to kind of make it seem like it's working uphill and coasting downhill it's pretty cool as we come by the utlx repair facility I'm going to put a crossing in here, but it's just going to be a wood crossing for a gravel road. This is a very smooth running locomotive. I do have the 4015 diesel SD70 powered. I do have it pulling, uh, but I have the sound turned off. I'm pretty sure that when they do these excursion trains, the... Uh, diesel locomotive is just along for the ride and is just there um, in case the steam locomotives break down and also be there in case they run out of water or something like that that they will have power to keep moving on. Here we come in past the east entrance into the Evanston yard and coming up uh, once again to the crossing. Now you have to imagine this. Uh, hearing the crossing bell ringing. Gates coming down. The lights flashing. It's going to be cool. All right, here we are at the here we are at the Aspen Tunnels. An ethanol train being pulled by Athern Givo and SD60. Camera had a little trouble deciding which train to focus on. We come out the other end. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed this video. Really appreciate your support. And wish everyone a great week. Take care everybody.